Hello, it's me, Mr. Wright again. Wanted to show you how to get started with a clarinet, how to put it all together. But before you do much of anything, as you open up your case or as you take out your clarinet reeds, what I like to do is uh, just take the reed out of the little plastic case and uh, I will number my reed cases, like this is number two on this one. I've got another one in there that says number one. And I just pull it out and I'm gonna put it inside of a little cup of water to let that reed get nice and wet. Um, it, it's, it takes about two days to get a reed broken in really well so you might want to um, let it be soaking and it's good when you're starting off a clarinet to start with like a number two and a half reed um, this is a number three and it's still stiff I'm still breaking it in hope it'll sound decent later but uh, you want to let that reed be soaking some people say well after a while you can just stick it in your mouth but remember water pure water is going to be it's going to seep into the pores of this reed uh, a lot better than uh, saliva will. So, anyway, when you put your clarinet together, you want to take the bell section, the bell section, just like that. We're going to build this clarinet from the bottom up. And uh, that way it gives us something nice to, to press down on as we build up. So we're going to take that, and then usually this, this piece right here uh, looks sort of like this. It's, uh, it's got the big end, it's, it's kind of long. It's, got, it's the one that's got the thumb rest right about there. And I've got a little pad on my thumb rest to make it easier on my right thumb. And we're just going to take this, and you want to grease these corks. I've already put some grease, uh, cork grease on mine. It usually comes and looks like a chapstick tube right there. And you just rub that onto your uh, thing and then spread that out on all of your corks. Because uh, if it's brand new, that's gonna, it's going to be kind of uh, stiff and you may, it may, these corks may be kind of swollen so it might be difficult so you want to make sure they're nicely lubricating make sure they're always moist you never want dry cork because then when you're putting your clarinet together it can tear the cork and mess up your cork and it's like fifteen dollars to have each one done there's quite a few joints on here that you have to be done you're just going to take your bell and just set it in like this and give it a nice easy twist and notice how I grab this part of the clarinet my, my fingers are pressing down where there's no keys see where the keys are right there I'm kind of I'm touching where there's no keys. I'm just kind of grabbing it where there's no because I don't want to bend these rods right here. So I'm just putting it together like this. And when you do this, you can also put this part like on your knee as you do that on your lap as you about put it together. Then the next section is the one that's got the little register key right here and the thumb place right there. And you want to put these two together. Now there's this little piece up under here. Hopefully you can see it. It's that little piece right up under there, and it's going to fit on top of this little piece right there on the side. This one right there, it's kind of, I'll get it closer to you. It's going to fit right on top of that side piece right there. And like I said, this has got to fit over that. So we've got to be careful to place that in such a way. And we're going to put that over here, make sure I can get it a little bit closer. I don't know if you can see that or not. I'm going to pull it over there, and I'm going to line the two up. And some model clarinets, they'll have actually a little notch right there that you just lock it right into. And it, I think, I can't remember what brand it was that has that. It's a neat little trick. And then I'm going to put the barrel, it's a piece that looks like this, right on top of there. Yeah. And then the mouthpiece. Get my ligature out of the way. Uh, but there's a flat part on the, on the mouthpiece like this it's called the table it's a flat part right there you want that and lined up on the same red uh, lined up with this register key on the back so we're going to put that on there make sure that's all lined up and then we're going to take our reed out you want to make sure that reed's nice and wet really on both sides and I'm going to put it on the table of the mouthpiece like so and I want to make sure that there's a pencil thin line of, of the black mouthpiece over that reed let's see if I, if I put it against my I tell you what I'll put it against my forehead that's a nice white surface and you line it up like so it's hard to see through this little monitor here but you see the little pencil thin line of black mouthpiece oh, gotta use my forehead here uh, pencil in that little line of mouthpiece over the reed I gotta look at it closely here Make sure I'm doing this right. Then once you get it in about the right spot, you're going to put your ligature over that with the screws facing towards you. Like, here's the screws right there, and you want them facing towards you. 
like so. So I'm going to face them towards me. And you want the, the ligature to come below where the cut of the reed is. It's, this is, reed is made out of bamboo and where they start to shave it down um, I don't know if you can see that. See where there's the, the bamboo, it starts to get shaved from there on up. So I've got the ligature well below that. And if you're wondering, what is that white blob thing right there? That's just some tape. My, my ligature over the years had stretched, I guess, I don't know. It's just too big. So I stuck some, um, some masking tape in there to take up that space. Now I'm going to tighten the ligature down. And uh, then when you form an embouchure, the way you hold your mouth to play the clarinet, first thing you're going to do is um, just with your bottom lip, barely roll it under just enough to cover up just the bottom teeth. You don't want to roll under a lot like, uh, like this, just enough to cover the bottom teeth to serve as a little pad between your teeth and that reed. And your top two teeth are going to rest on the mouthpiece about right there. So it's not too much mouthpiece in there. So it's going to look like it's about that much of the mouthpiece into your mouth. And I'll show you what that looks like. Roll my bottom lip under just a little bit. And uh, notice that I, I kind of licked it first to make sure that reads nice and wet because it won't make a good sound unless it's wet. And cover up my, just roll my bottom lip just enough to make a little pad and set my top teeth on top of the mouthpiece. Now I'm going to play an open G. That means I'm just going to support. I should have spoken about this first. I'm going to put my right thumb up underneath that thumb rest and the middle of the thumb rest is going to come right to where the middle of my, where my thumbnail begins. So let's see if I can get this to where you can see it. Here's, the, here's where my thumbnail begins and that's where the thumb rest right in the middle of that. That's where I want that so that my fingers can reach all these little keys right here, the right hand. You want your right hand on the bottom where that thumb rest and then your left hand goes on top with these keys right here over these keys right there, the, the three open ones, one, two, and three, and so that you can have access to these little keys right here, and your right hand pinky has access to those. So you have to kind of turn yourself around that way, right hand on the bottom, left hand on top. Please don't try to cheat on that, because that will hurt you later on. And then, uh, but we're not going to put any fingers down yet, we're just going to play an open G, and uh, I'm just going to put my, roll my bottom up under, like I said, just a little bit, top teeth on the mouthpiece to play an open G. I'm getting that tongue sound like ta 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 by just ba barely taking my tongue and I'm just barely touching with the tip of my tongue right under here just barely barely touch it just go ta 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 you need to practice that and some directors which I think is a good idea they they say take this off from the barrel up and just see if you can get a sound just on the mouthpiece I know one director he spends a couple of months just on using the mouthpieces. Uh, you want a straight tone. If you hear it sound like this, that means you're starting with a weak embouchure and then firming up the embouchure. You want to start off with a firm embouchure with bottom lip rolled under just a little bit. And just the top teeth on top, like I said. And you should have a, a clear, consistent. Now, if it goes like this, you want to just bring it up a little bit. Now, let me show you a side, ver a side view of this armature also. It should be out just at an angle, like so. You don't want it flush against, you don't want the reed resting against your chin. It needs to be out. Think about pointing your chin, your bottom chin like that. Keep all this flat against up against your teeth. Your t lips should not go like that when you're playing. You don't want to put too much mouthpiece inside the uh, mouth because then what will happen is you, then the air can leak out the side of the reed and get this high pitched squeal or squeak that is very very unpleasant. Like I'm going to put too much mouthpiece in my mouth. And that's called a squeak. That's when I put too much of the mouthpiece in my mouth. So I'm going to back it out and uh, I'm actually going to reposition the camera here so you can see a little side view of it a little bit better. Let's see here. Roll my bottom lip under just a little bit. Like... You 
you want your chin to feel have this pointed feel of the muscles in your mouth to pinch so it's all flat pointed chin is what you want to go for and you want to practice with your tongue touching just the very just the tip of your tongue just barely touching that real lightly to where you can go now I'm going to show you just the first few fingerings that will be in your method book Ugh. let's get closer on the clarinet of course you got your thumb under here and we're not going to put any, any fingers down on the right hand yet what we're going to do is uh, on the back side there's this little hole right there and we're going to put a thumb right there at an angle like this and then our first finger right here underneath that little A key right there first finger second finger and third finger this one's just a, a hole all right so our first finger we like open G thumb is an F and then an E D and C C D E F G all right open G so again it's C D E F and then open G if I want to play my A key, I just reach up with this finger without touching any of the other keys. I just reach up and with my knuckle, I kind of rock my knuckle up and hit that A key. So, let me show you that. I'm going to pull the camera a little closer and try to show you what that looks like. I tilt it down a little bit so you can see my fingers. Should I pull my thumb away? Let me tilt this down a little bit better so you can see better. Again, we're going to go C, D, E, F, G, like so. Now, I'm, when I pick up my fingers, when I normally play, I just pick my fingers up just enough to clear the keys. You don't want to pick them up real high like that, like you're waving goodbye to anybody. You want to keep them down just right above the keys so you won't have to move your fingers as far. Just, just pick them up about a half an inch. So... Let me do this at another angle. Now that other note right there is a B flat. I just hit the register key. See how that pops that open? So those are the, the C, D, E, F, G, A, B flat. And those are the main few notes that you'll learn at the beginning of your uh, when you play clarinet and then if you have thumb one two three that's your C then they'll start having you put down your your first finger of the right hand the second finger and third finger like a B flat a low A and then a G it'll sound like this let me tilt this down again so you can see the right hand here's the C thumb one two three then I'm gonna add a finger And if I hit this key down here, the one farthest from this knuckle here, this one right here, there's four of them down here. That's, these two guys are close, and that one's close, but this one way down here is a low F. And all I'm holding on to is my thumb. So you can play a whole scale, F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E. F, just the thumb alone, F, E, D, C, B flat, A, G, low F. Pick up two fingers, I'm going to play an arpeggio note right now. F, A, C, thumb alone, C, one, two, three fingers back down. A, put down two fingers. So I'm picking up two fingers, pick up two fingers, pick up three fingers for that F. So that's the arpeggio in the F scale. Now that's about the easiest scale on the clarinet. So hopefully all this has been helpful to you. And when you swab out your clarinet, let me move the camera back just a little bit because this is important you need to know how to take care of your clarinet when it comes time to pack it away after you've practiced 
you want to, um, first of all, take that reed off. We're going to loosen the ligature screws. The ligature is the little metal piece right here. Pull that off. And you want to be very careful with the reed so that we don't chip it. You don't want to chip that thing at all. And what I do is I'll take it and I'll hold it by the back side of it and I'll just kind of wring it out by pressing the water out of it with my fingers. I kind of dry it off and I reinsert it back into the plastic case that it came in. Keep these cases. You got the, the, the number, uh, the reed case numbered so you know which one you pulled out first. And you always want to have two or at, at least three clarinet reeds ready at all times because if it takes two or three days to break in a reed you know, and you accidentally chip one, then you, know, it, you don't want to wait two or three days before you can play a decent sound. So you take this and put it back inside and uh, notice there's a side that's got this little, the two tabs in there. There's one side that's flat. You want the flat side of the reed, the bottom side, not the cut side like this, but the flat side is just a straight flat side against the flat side in here. So you just look in there and say where the, there's two ridges point down. You say, ah, the curved side, I want that pointing to the two little ridge side pieces. Your band director can help you with that. But if there's C2 little, uh, little ridges on the inside, I don't know if you can see that or not, but they're, they're pointing down. So I want that aiming toward the top round section of this. I'm going to tip the, put this, the tip in right here, just the way you got it out. You can put it back in the same way. And we'll put that in there and let that, that way this, this reed can be on a flat surface and it also allows it to dry properly. It's got ventilation holes on it. And we'll put that in my case. And then hopefully you've got a cleaning swab. Now some cleaning swabs, they come with this little uh, felt stuff, the little felt thing that's not very absorbent. Uh, they sell nicer ones like a shimmy cloth here and uh, what I do is a lot of times I'll take the, 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 the cord for cleaning that, that comes with the clarinet. It's like I got a weight on one side and a long string. Sometimes I'll clip off that little tiny little piece of felt and I'll put a regular handkerchief on it. But what you want to do uh, to make it clean out your clarinet, uh, we've taken off the ligature and the reed and we're going to set this weight in here into the bell like so and let it sink on down in here and notice that on the other end it came out of the mouthpiece on the other end I'm just going to pull it through and it, and it swabs out that mouthpiece you want to swab it that way make sure you come from the bell toward the mouthpiece most of the condensation the, the moisture will be on this end of the, the tubing you don't want to drag all that moisture down that way so that's why and the bell's a great way to uh, it's a great way to come from and then you want to clean out everything because you don't want any moisture up against the pads on you know, the clarinet because it'll cause them to rot then after you do that, you can start taking apart. I just grab, remember, where there's no keys, I'm taking apart the bell section, put it in there first, then take the next section right here, and then this next section, grabbing where there's no keys, and I lay it in just the way it came out. You can kind of look at the, the indentions in the case to see how it works, where they all, all the pieces fit, and then your bell section, and you want to make sure that mouthpiece is nice and clean, Put the ligature back on. If you accidentally leave it out of your case, don't say, well, I'll get it later. No, stick it back in your case because you'll forget it and you'll, you'll, you'll be in band class the next day and you won't have a ligature, anything to hold on your reed. And your band director will get mad at you. Don't want that. And then usually this is the, the swab, uh, the clean cloth is usually a little bit wet. So what I do is I'll just leave it, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and close up my case and I'll just wrap this around the handle of the case for that, for that night, and then the next morning, it's dry by the next morning, then you can stick it inside your case before you go to school or work to the class or wherever you're going to play. But uh, let it kind of sit on the outside so it can dry. You don't want it to get all mildewy in and everything, and you don't want that moisture in there with your, your instrument. So just uh, leave it on the outside, wrapped around the handle, then the next morning, you can put it inside, and the way you'll fold it up, you just fold it up like so, and wrap it up nice and tidy like so. I didn't play a lot, so mine's not really wet. And I put it inside my case there. And you don't want to shove music inside of your case because that could, once it closes, it's made to form fit around your, your, the parts of your instrument to hold those pieces snug. If you shove a folder or a book uh, in your case, what it does is it presses down those keys and it'll bend the keys and it's not made for that. And you'll mess up your, your instrument, then you'll have to have it uh, adjusted. So, yeah. Uh, it's called the regulation, how high the keys move. and, and uh, So you don't want to mess up your clarinet. Take good care of it. 
a, a, a brand new clarinet can cost like $650 for a student line. And of course, a professional wooden clarinet is going to be over $1,000. So a huge investment. Uh, and it's such a, a rare opportunity that, that anyone on this planet gets a chance to even touch a, a musical instrument. So it's a rare opportunity that you have. Um, make the most of it and, and take care of this wise investment and it'll last you uh, perhaps your whole lifetime. So take care of it, play it, and, and just conquer this. It takes time. The best way to learn to play a clarinet or any instrument is by playing the clarinet, by doing it. And uh, ask questions and, and figure it out. And um, more later, but uh, hope you enjoy playing the clarinet.